Hello, chat. Say hello if you can see me. We're having some technical difficulties today. I don't know why. Internet just like randomly cuts out for 30 seconds at a time. But I think it is still, I think my opponent had also disconnected, so I think my opponent's clock is still running. Unless MTG, MTG hasn't re like reloaded, I don't know. Anyway, hello, hello. Thank you for the follow, uh, uh, what is it? I ask, oh, the king. I think that's it. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. If, if you guys can hear me, I have no idea at this point. Yes, my opponent disconnected Moto, I know that. Is, is my opponent still disconnected? Is it Moto? No, it's not Moto's fault, because my OBS is also crashing. It looks like we're going strong now, so... What ifs? I can sit here and wait for my opponent to decide to not block and take three damage. And then for me to port planes, leave up double white for Brightling, and possibly Violin Recruit on end step. Is more or less the current plan. What's up, Death and Cat Mix? So go ahead and get some Box infection. <laughs> God, don't remind me. <laughs> that four color Aluron Blade match was just such a nightmare. We had like two Aether Sworn Candidates, and they're like, oh, we just have three recruiters in our hand. Easy. We're playing a simple matchup now, and we're beaten down. But my opponent is also disconnected, so we're just kind of hanging out. Are we disconnecting again? God, I hope not. Am I frozen? Oh god. I don't know, it seems fine. Okay, yeah. Okay, we're fine. You know of a barbecue place called Rolling Smoke? I do not, I don't think. Doesn't sound familiar. Is that yours? I don't know. I'm still looking it up. You <laughs> sent one out to Denver. What do you mean, like St. Louis sent one out to Denver? St. Louis is known for its uh Um, it's barbecue. Happy. We got Happy's here. Does it have any locations? Give me locations. Website. Menu, catering, shop, order, contact. Locations. Here we go. There's one in Las Vegas. No, I don't want to zoom on the Google Maps. There's one in Las Vegas again. There's one in Las Vegas again. Are, am I sure that this is... Am I looking at the right Roland Smoke? Maybe not. This is Roland with an apostrophe. With N apostrophe rather than Rolling. Although this one says... Second location now open in Colorado. This one sounds like the one you're talking about. These are both in Colorado. I have no idea. Never heard of this place. Maybe if I had searched St. Louis, I would have gotten a better answer. If this place exists. Rolling Smoke Cigars. Any spicy tech in those for running? Uh, we're playing... Oh, my opponent's finally back. We're playing just a walking ballista on the sideboard. Um, I think that's like the only real spicy thing. We're not, not doing anything terribly exciting. <coughs> if you wanted to see the, the deck list, if you're on like desktop, there should be a little button over down there. I can never point because it's always backwards. 
down there, like on the corner, there's like that blue tab. If you're if you're if you're on mobile, you can like just type exclamation point deck list if you want to link to the deck list. Or I can just show it off because my opponent's sitting here doing nothing. I met him. Maybe it's got. Well, I, I mean, the owner might be from St. Louis. I don't know. Do they have like a store in St. Louis? Maybe the owner like learned a barbecue in St. Louis and decided to open their store elsewhere. Because I don't see anything about roll and smoke barbecue in St. Louis. Yeah, this is all in Colorado. Oh, my opponent says, sorry, my internet decided to take a, a an asterisk, 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 asterisk. It happens. It happened to us while my opponent was also distincted. Ours settled. <laughs> it's all good. There is a lot of barbecue. Like, I'm not surprised if they are from St. Louis, because there's a bunch of barbecue here. We went to Kansas City last week to pick up our other cat that we had just adopted. So, and Kansas City is, like, actual, like, one of the top barbecue places in the U.S. Just, That's where you eat the eat before you die. Yeah, the one we went to is on, like, Anthony Bourdain's 13th place to eat before you die. Yeah, it's a pretty, like, it's a pretty stock list. Not really doing anything super exciting. I kind of want to cut it close to what I want to be playing in the challenge as well. But I also wanted to mess around with cool stuff. Oh, my opponent just concedes, I guess. Maybe their internet was, like, really bad and they couldn't do anything. They just gave up. Yeah, it's us in Texas. I heard Memphis is pretty good, but I don't know. I've never been there. Texas barbecue shit. That's a lot. Of, I've heard that a lot, but I've never been to... No, that's a lie. I've been to Texas like once, but not for a very extended period of time. Wino Jailer. I'm just not a big fan of the card personally. The card is like pretty divisive amongst some of the DNT players. And... Wait, the opponent just conceded the game, not the match? So now we're in sideboarding, right? This is a sideboard clock. Um, it's, like, really high ceiling, low floor card, and the floor is really low sometimes. Like, if you were watching the Pro Tour and you saw the, the semifinals match, it was really good in that one game. I forget which one. And then, but then the final game, Palace Jailer was just, like, the war absolute worst card in his deck. And I'm just not that big in on a, a high variance card like that. It is a good card. I just personally don't don't like it as much. All right, so we need a sideboard here. Um, that's about it. Cut like two plows or something. Provoker, Gita, Crusader. Yeah, I kind of like Revoker. Nah, do I need three? Probably not. Revoker or Crusader? Maybe one Crusader. I've never been a huge fan of Revoker, but if my opponent's on... Oh, hey, cat! Ow, your claws are very sharp. Anyway. Uh, never been a huge fan of Revoker against Miracles, but recently they've been playing more Engineered Explosives and such, so maybe it's a little bit better, but... My opponent did have a Volcanic Island, notably, so they are most likely on the version that would have a little more. Final back to Legacy, all the smaller versions. Like, yeah, I know. It's hard to, like, play both formats and try to give them an equal amount of, uh, equal amount of love. But I usually stream Legacy on Friday, but I skip that, and then I usually stream Legacy on Monday, but I also skip that, and then Wednesday I kind of have an unofficial promise to stream Modern a bunch, to stream Black White, Ultra on the Taxes, so... Had to switch it back up and play some more Legacy. <laughs> what am I looking to six? I almost want to keep this hand. But if this vial resolves, then we just die. Or this vial doesn't resolve, we just die. Mm, I'm gonna draw. Eh. Done so border barn. Yeah, I'm like I'm like, I'm back and forth on it. Put them all to five, geez. Alright. I think we're in for this hand. Modern is a tough format to do consistently well in, just based on the, the variance of like the, the vast amount of decks in the format. I enjoy playing the deck that I play, 
It's not like super, super competitive, but it is fun, so I play it. To each their own. I won't knock anyone to play in any of their whatever formats they like. No shuffle? I assume they found land. Let's find us, us a land. That'd be nice. I get wrecked on legacy from the hyperspeed of comedex. I mean, that's kind of like true in modern nowadays, isn't it? A lot of people, like people that don't play legacy, like not knocking you specifically, but drawing a comparison to what you're saying is like, a lot of people that don't understand legacy do think that, oh, you're just gonna like die turn one or two all the time. Like legacy is super, like super crazy. But there are so many games that are just, like, very interesting and take a lot of depth and aren't just like, oh, I died on turn one because I didn't have a force of or whatever. Oh, fuck, we're dead. <laughs> Land? Nice, never mind, we're not dead. Yeah, all the fast decks in modern are semi-creature based, right? Scrap Trawler, Baral. I don't really know other decks. I mean, ooh, put on missing land drops. I think I just want a Stoneforge here. Kind of want a Mom Mom, but oh yeah, Hol Hollow One I guess is like really gross. That's that's my least favorite of the like get you decks because it never feels like your matches are very skill intensive. They just like get bad burning inquiries or good burning inquiries often. Yeah. There are, it's, there, there, you like have more tools to manage the hyperspeed, like you, basically no matter what deck you're playing, you have like game against them. Like if you're playing Death Attacks, you're just gonna lose to Belcher and that's, that's just a fact because you can't just play like a white card that's gonna shit on Belcher. I wanna put this Prelate on one, but. I'm fine with. Do I want War and Peace? Probably. I want uh, protection from Source of Plowshares more than I want to, like, draw cards. Miss. Brick. 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 Say brick. Oh, dang it, they did break. Wait, did they do that in their draw step on accident? I mean, it doesn't matter. They didn't cast on the draw step, it doesn't affect anything. But they didn't draw fetch, which means they, like, kind of bricked. This also means I get to play Mother Runes and activate Sword of War, and, or and put it in sort of the Sword of War in peace. Out predict turning themselves, boo. Yeah, exactly. If you, you, like, I enjoy playing modern and I'll just like play the deck I enjoy playing, and then sometimes you'll just run into like really unwinnable matchups. Like when you're playing Death and Taxes and you run into like humans and stuff, or elves. Um, do I want to play around Ventilian Click? I think so. Just the only thing that put putting this into play right now plays around is like a council's judgment, which I think if Vendillion clicked, I just get to put in Banner Skull though. I really want the Sword of War in peace. Yeah, we're gonna put it into play now. Oops. What's up, Gonti? Worst matchup is Lantern Control. Yeah. At least Lantern Control. Lantern Control, you do have tools that you can, like, win sometimes, right? Because you have Stony Silence and stuff. I guess your deck specifically does not, so I imagine that matchup is very bad. Because I did comment on the lack of artifact hate. So that matchup's probably rough. Like, Ensnaring Bird matchups in general. Can you beat Ensnaring Bird with that deck? I don't remember. I guess, like, Walking Ballista Post Board, but that's not, like, a good plan. 
I did I did enjoy Popper during my my brief stint. All right, let's try to equip this Stone Forge. I guess see how it goes. Snapcaster Plow. That's not like a good plan, right? Unless they also have a second plow. Oh, Snap Disenchant. That's mean. At least we get to put in this batter school. Oh yeah, Shalaya's gas against Lantern, that's true. Don't know why they didn't let me like attack with the Stoneforge first. Could have like traded Snap for Stoneforge if they wanted, and prevent me from putting this batter school down. Selling out after this counterfeit. Yeah, it is kind of scary holding on to all these cards with the counterfeit market. Well, that's not that bad for me. Question is, am I going to like flicker wisp their Snapcaster Mage or just use the mom to kill the Jace? I think I'm gonna get Terminist. Oh, now. I guess it is different. If they don't cast a spell here. Oh, nice, they're just casting a spell. Alright. So we can definitely, we can guarantee kill this Jace. I could also just put Prelate on six, right? To try and line up against a Terminus that they have. It does die pretty hard to Supreme Verdict. They've already they've only fired off like one plow, right? Yeah, the disenchant's going in exile. Um What do I want to do here? So I could mom the germ pro blue, kill the Jace, play Prelate on six. If and then I keep this flicker wisp so that if they supreme verdict me, I can just flicker wisp the batter skull for like to reload. It also puts shields down, they could have plow, but then that stalls them if they put terminus on the top of their deck. No, they could actually just plow the prelate into terminus me. But again, that's not a huge deal. I think I'm just going to use the Mom. Save the Wisp. Six is the answer. Terminus is the only card that really scares me here. If they have Verdict, it's kind of annoying, but then I can Wisp the Germ. Reload, that sort of thing. Wisp Germ plus Mom or something. Just immediately have a board again. Did not shuffle off the Ponder. Are they going to fire off a plow on the mom like a prelate? Snap plow. It's got to be the prelate, right? Prelate, and they can set up the. They could even use the ponder to set up, yeah, for this terminus. So I think there's a terminus on the top of my opponent's deck. Would be my best guess. Which is really bad if they have like another Jace to reload with, but. They're just gonna block with these things, right? I'll leave it back. Yeah, 
They're just going to chunk block because they're going to terminus me. This is fine. Okay, they're using the brainstorm to set up the terminus. So they probably, they might have actually drawn the terminus for that turn. Now they're using the brainstorm to set it back up. Show not a terminus. What? I don't think I want to play out anything else here. I think I'm content with just this board state right now. I don't know what their plan is, but... Until they answer, like, the board as it sits. Is this, this is the terminus. Here we go. They put a two down? But then decided to take this hit instead of blocking with this other Snapcaster? Seems unusual. Are they gonna like entreat? Is that their plan? No, there's not gonna cast anything. I'm so confused. What's my opponent's plan here? Finally on both decks on screen. Sweet. Council's judgment, that's a little rude. I think I'm supposed to pick up Batter Skull here. Then they vote for Stoneforger Mom, which I don't care about. They have to vote for Stoneforge too, because if they vote for Mom, I just put the Batter Skull back in. So this is just three drop Swords of Plowshares, your Stoneforge Mystic. I guess it also bounces my Batter Skull, but we have plenty of plans. Resolves. Yeah, they vote for Stoneforge. Sure. Now I have a Council's Judgment. That's nice. For a future Jace or a Mentor or something. I have four mana up, two cards in hand. I have six mana. I want to cast multiple spells. The issue is if I cast Battle Scroll, it gets counterspelled. I don't have a threat anymore. My Sarah Bencher, see what? Wow, they're just F6'd. Do I play second mom? Probably not. I think this Avenger's probably good enough as it sits. So they just have nothing? They have like another disenchant or something for it, sure. If they just eventually board wipe me, it's good to have the batter skull in place so I can flip or spit. How ready are we to go back to Ravnica? I'm pretty ready. I don't know what I want to see out of it. But Ravnica is a sweet set. Someone's also just firing off these fetch lands for no reason. Making brainstorm top decks much worse. Yeah, original Ravnica and RTR were both like really sweet sets. The block left something to be desired in RTR. Dragon Smith was kind of a shitter, but snap Council's judgment your batter skull. Sure, we're still just gonna clock you with the Sarah Avenger. Uh, 
punch. They have one card in hand. Maybe I'm supposed to just play Wisp. Just so I can have lethal in the air. I want to like Wisp this recruiter though. This guy's recruiter, see what happens. Meddling Mage put a 1 3 for 1 and 1. <laughs> Why that card would be bananas. Can we make it like a 1 4? Just make sure it doesn't get bolted. Let's grab another recruiter. The cat's naked and mature reading on stream. <laughs> yes, the cat is naked. Um, I ap apologize for any uh, viewers watching from work. This is a naked cat stream. The above is why I don't get to design sets. Yes, I, I would agree to that. Um. Could grab Ballista, they're pretty low. We have six lands? Eh, like it was. They need Terminus or Verdict, or they basically lose. Can't even, like, EE for three, because I have two different CMCs of Flyers. Yeah, they're just dead. Cool. We get to dunk on Miracles, that's always fun. Another pre board and another post board game. That was it. Non play feedback? Yeah, sure. Your MPGO sounds are much louder than uh, Is that? That might very well be true. I, I've, I've messed with the audio at some point, but I think I got like unmessed up. So there's definitely a chance that I'm supposed to like turn it down. Let me find whichever one is the. Desktop audio. Let's try that. But yeah, definitely reasonable. What's the red for in Miracles these days? Uh, Pyroblast, Engineered Explosives on three. That's about it. I muted desktop audio on OBS. That's, that's also fair. I kind of like the audio for me personally, but it's also fair that like muted on OBS because no one else likes it. <laughs> I enjoy, like, hearing the different sounds of, like, oh, there's phase changes and stuff notifying me when things are happening, but it's definitely... Yeah, exactly. That's not a, not a bad idea. From the feedback I have heard, no one likes li listening to MTGO sounds, except for me. Flying 2-2, ETB returned on Angel, creature from graveyard to your hand. Seems like for modern, would it be that good though? Um, would that be? I mean, that'd be obviously. It's like just a flying grave digger, right? That can't grave digger its like itself to like loop infinite two twos. All right, tell me if you guys can still hear it. If I mess something up, I think it should be good now. No soul problems. <laughs> I mean, I haven't not seen it, but <laughs> it's very uncommon for them to be playing like a lot, like a lot of relevant red cards in the board. Mostly just a pretty free splash. They used to play Blood Moon sometimes. But that kind of went out of style. The more back to basics deck. Uh, this hand is a bummer. I don't want it. This hand is also a bummer. I also don't want it. I want it even less than the first hand. Alright, well. Can't win them all. All right, later, Chileth. Have a good night. And it's just also, it's like not even a keepable five. It's not like a one lander five where it's just like, well, we'll keep it and hope it goes somewhere because this hand is just also unkeepable. All right. Deal. Probably just have to top spells that are castable. There's definitely an argument for like me not even, not even playing a card, but I don't think... I guess on, how many underground C decks am I beating on a four card hand? It's gonna hit me on turn two, and I'm just never going to win. Do I lead with Caracas to play around him, or lead with Rashadnport to play around Wasteland? 
and don't even know. I think I'm just gonna leave with Caracas. It doesn't really. If I don't, I don't think I can beat like either of those cards to be honest. I can't beat Wasteland or him to Turok, so play around and neither. Play Port to conceal that I'm on Death and Taxes before I concede. Could be on Goblins with a Mold of War if I led with Port. Thoughtseize. Alright. Well, if they're on Storm, and then we LED, we name LED with Revoker, then we still probably lose. We can top deck Thalia. Alright, they took Stone Forge, so I don't think they're on Storm. But, yeah. Probably on Grixis Controller, Grixis Delver. I'm just going to run out Stoneforge, grab Sword of Fire Knights to hopefully draw out of this mess, but I doubt we're ever going to stick a creature. Thanks, Brockus. Always there for me when I need you. Like Colgon's commanded, die horribly. Snap thought sees. Well, that's rude. <sighs> we can Frex and Revoker Jace the Mind Sculptor. Do they play Lily the Last Hope in the main deck? I don't think they do, but. Man, I can cast a Cerevenger on turn four. Which also involves stone raining myself. Is it worth attacking into the Snapcaster? Versus like top decking and equipment? I only have two equipment left in the deck. One of them is Chite, which I can just cast for the same amount of mana, so I think the answer is attack. I assume they'll trade. I also kind of want them to trade so I don't get just Colgons commanded and they just kill both my things. I'd much rather like discard an extra Caracas or something. Chase the Mind Sculptor. We are totally dead. I think the the chances that I beat Grix's Control when they keep 7 and I'm level 4 are probably below 1%. We can draw like three basic planes and then Brightling, and also they never draw a Counterspell or Baleful Strix. Can I tag into this? Let me just play out my whole hand. Maybe this attack isn't. No. Maybe, yeah, maybe this attack isn't smart. If they do have Jace, we just get hosed. But. Chances of them not having removal, also having the Jace. I was thinking the same line of like playing around Colgon's command, but then I realized the Servender doesn't actually die to Colgon's command. So that attack probably wasn't the best, but. I'm gonna just play out our land here. Slam Jace, ultimate punish. Nice. Bolt. Kill your thing. K command and draw step, shatter file, make me discard. Some some rude thing like that. Or just like cast a cast a Gurmog.
Probably wouldn't even be in their best interest to shadow the vial. They'd probably rather buy back a Snapcaster. Yeah, this is a Gurmog. Yes, yeah, so we're playing against. We have Lightning Bolt or something? Lightning Bolt. Oh, they just actually don't have enough cards in their graveyard. They need to pay extra mana for the. The big fish. But they could just pay this man actually would keep a card in their yard. Probably like lightning bolt or something. They already burned through two snaps though. Might actually rather keep a snap for cake man. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's what they did. <coughs> so we are incredibly dead. Just the deadest. One day my opponent will let me take my vial up to one. And then inevitably draw a three drop that I cannot cast. <sighs> and then die. <sighs> Plan is like draw source of plowshares and then hope the last two cards in their hand are garbage. And then we find Brightling plus some other stuff to recoup the horrible card disadvantage that we're in. Opponent says dot in the chat. Which I assume just means they're trying to do something. Yeah. It's usually like test if like motos still working. Um Yeah, we'll play with this. Aha! Take that. Yeah, I think my opponent can just let that be tapped. My opponent says, sorry, lagging a lot. Is Moto, like, having problems? Did anyone else run into that today? My last opponent was lagging. I lagged, although my total, my internet totally crashed. Like, OBS died too, so... Not gonna pin that one on Moto, but it just seems a recurring issue for my opponents. Nice. Alright, Brightling plan. Maybe import them off of red. So that's something that exists. Oh, that's a card that exists also. Oh, actually, I actually should plow it now so they can't hard cast force. I might be dragging the connection on the server between you and the people. I have no idea how any of that stuff works, cat mix. All right, my opponent has four cards in hand. We have none. All right, we have one, and it's a basic planes. Now we're gonna hold on to these to like play around getting Cake Man discard plus five X snap. And repeatedly port all the red sources. Even though the only uh, red sources they have in their deck, or like the red card, important red cards are probably like lightning bolts and stuff. Empty chair is pretty much trash. Well, you're not wrong there. I do know that much. Yeah. Go get him, tiger. Chase the mind sculptor. When he lags both of you, like, maybe. That might be. I don't know. But I, like, I'm not lagging anymore. Knock on wood. 
just gonna pull this rover down, sure, whatever. Let's find Brightling, or at this point Crusader. My opponent has cast two lightning bolts. This deck usually only has like three, right? Oh no, a big, th oh him, sure, deal. Him my planes, opponent, do it. He's expecting a, a gigantic fish. Mm, well, that's not great. Luckily, my opponent is also flooding out. So hopefully my opponent just draws nothing, and then we find a Recruiter of the Guard, or like a Brightling, or a Crusader, or something. Or more planes. We'll play one of these. So we don't just get him for two free lands. We do want no some number of white sources in play. If we do eventually draw our one of Brightling. Is this a Jace? This feels like a Jace. This is a Gurmog that's just paying full equity? Yeah. Alright. That's also pretty unbeatable. Oh man. Get him good. We could still draw a Mirren Crusader. here. I imagine. Yeah. Well, we tried. We both just like sat there really awkwardly for a bit and we drew a bunch of Phyrexia Revokers and lands and my opponent drew a bunch of lands and then this Gurmach Angler, which got the job done. Notably, we did not have that many like great job decks in our deck left. Especially if my opponent has four cards in hand. I don't I'm wouldn't be surprised if they just like had a force of will or something. As soon as I did if I drew like a Thalia or something to to stall with the Caracas. Anyhow. Grixis control. Kill these bad revokers. Shape plows? That seems fine. Keeping one as like a niche recruiter target against Liliana Last Hope or Jace. Plow is pretty bad. They usually trim down anglers if people follow the BBD convention. And even if they don't, two, two plows plus two council judgments pretty decent. Plowing Baleful Strix is also a thing you sometimes do. It's not great, but it happens. So something like this seems fine. Does Rangmere ever bring in war, sort of War and Peace just for like extra card advantage? It's not particularly good, which is why I don't like it, but something can be said for just having like the fourth equipment since this game does go very long. Sometimes you just start playing Squires at some point. Keep this. File into Port plus Mom. Put them to six. And we just have like Recruiter Wisp. Down for this hand. Is also a good draw. I almost want to cast it here instead of porting. Maybe it is correct. 
There's nothing they can do, right? They can't push it. They can force it, and that's about it. I think I'm okay with them forcing it. It also, this does leave the shields down until I get this killed. Whereas if I had, like, waited Vild and Mom or something, this doesn't get pushed right now. If they, like, had push here, I could have had it next turn instead, but... Yeah, casting is about as good as porting, but it gets me the body into play faster, but it also risks this Thali dying. But I'm just on, like, natural two basics here. <laughs> no fetching required. Man, if they had non-basic, they'd be so good here. I am for sure just going to be porting them, so... Wow, they have two basic swamps on their deck? And they've just drawn all three of these basics? What is what is this? <laughs> just board out all their fetch lands. <laughs> oh man, walking ballista. Play for two ping the Strix. Although I don't really need to take care of the Strix right now, and I think I always want to keep using this port. Land marsh casualties would be kind of annoying. But they can't fetch more basics. I would be impressed if they had a mountain in their deck. They have to get a wastelandable land now. Not even red. Marsh casualties would not shock me here. Came to Turok. Ooh, that's a little mean. Do I just recruit a Wisp and hope for the best? Because I'd rather have the Recruiter in play and have the chance, have like the two and three of keeping a Wisp. Then like, because if I discard the Recruiter and the Ballista, then I'm left with a Wisp, but the Wisp has no valid, like no reasonable targets. The issue is if I discard both the Wisps, I'm left with a one one in play. But then I can like Ballista down the Strix at least. Nice. Kept a wisp. Another land here is actually nice. Oh, wait, no, because then I... I could cast wisp on a recruiter and then wasteland... Or, and then port, but I want to wasteland plus port, I think. Yeah, I don't really need to, like, cast this Wisp and then get another Wisp on this vial. Just keep hitting it for two. And playing a ton of X1s to get Marsh Casualties. in the blue. It's gonna be like a sick blowout if they actually have the land and they were like severely baiting me here. At some point I might want to go grab Wisp since they just like don't have a, a or not Wisp, but I might want to grab a Crusader since they just don't have a Lightning Bolt. Or they don't have mana for Lightning Bolt. And I also just want to play around getting Neg 1, Neg 1 dead of this game. Just 
We're going to attack with the Swiss. Yep, that's fine. Sets up my future Wisps to attack. It also lessens the blow of a uh, Marsh Casualties or something in the future. Oh, they do have the land. I don't think I want to just walk into a... Marsh Casualties here. Well, it's the same thing. If they just cast Marsh Casualties here, I would just flicker this Recruiter. So it's going to it's gonna be the same end result anyway, so might as well. Uh, yeah, we'll grab Mirror Crusader now. They can snap to trade with Recruiter, but... Was I supposed to put a rip in this matchup? I don't think so. Yeah, I think I'm letting... I'm gonna let them trade here. They go to six. They're just in like very lethal range of this Mirror Crusader. They were found the red source. I also think they're dead. I'm just gonna put in this crusader and kill them? Question mark. Yeah, cool. Game three. Was I supposed to put in rips in this matchup? I don't think I was. Their deck is just snapped at. At this point, they're like, they no longer have Deathrite Shamans, so which just Snapcaster Mage and Gurmog Anglers, which they may have shaved. I don't think Rip is relevant enough. I'm trying to think of if there's other stuff in their deck that actually interacts with the graveyard. I mean, I guess K Command plus Snaps does. I'm not sure if it's worth the slot. It could be worth, like, the Revoker and the Plow or something. Plows aren't excellent, Revoker's okay. And we'll just run back. Yeah, that's why I enjoy playing this matchup a lot more than playing Check Pile, because the mana dial just takes you so much further. This hand is a little medium without a vial, but it's got a bunch of powerful tools, so I don't think I can really pass it up. Also, all Death and Dagas players lick their lick their palms to uh, keep Aether Vial on top of their deck. It's a trade secret. Alright, now here I feel like I don't play the Thalia, because they can just, like, fetch, bolt, or push it. I think I'm better off just uh, playing port and setting up vile, vile and Thalias. Also, if they're not casting a spell on two mana. If I port them, they will likely not cast the spell again. Except for, like, Brainstorm, maybe, here. Like, Brainstorm plus fetch land. Nope, they just like to bluff. Man, these Rashawn ports are going to be gas. Support the Underground Seeks, it's more relevant mana types. I'll 
let this go into the draw step first and then activate this vial. So they can just push or bolt this. That's fine. Bolt? Huh, yep. Do I want to take this vial to three or no? I think the answer is no. Not yet. I need to put in Stoneforge, go find, like, Sword of Fire and Ice. Or Batter Skull, even. Oh, man. This Wasteland, too. I think we're just going to double port here first, but... Turn after I might be slam them. Just put them off all their blue sources here. I don't really like bluffing that uh that floating mana. I don't know what's up with it, like. It's more time off your off your clock, dude. Unless they like actually are considering casting a spell every time they float the mana and just decide not to. But seems iffy. Do you like Ballista and DNT? I'm not sure yet. This is the first time I've really tested it out. And I have yet to cast it ever. But it seems it's an interesting possibility. I like the concept of it. I definitely don't have enough experience to make a decision. Fire Skull, Sword of Fire and Ice. I think Sword of Fire and Ice may be actually better. Just Violet in? Yeah, get him. Violet on zero. Ballista. Now I'll take this up to three. Oh, man. <laughs> it's going to be really awkward to put this in if we're just porting them a bunch, but it is also a sick draw. crap out of my opponent. I think I'm just going to port once. They're not casting anything. Are going to fold the Stoneforge? Deal. Recruiter to pick it up. They could just like land shatter it, make me discard, discard this port. Or they have nothing, we are going to go all in on the mana denial plan. I'm gonna grab a flicker with this recruiter, I think. Could grab Crusader, they have burned two bolts. Just grabbing Crusader might be better. Crusader plus Sword of Fire Nice is insane too. It's worse against Diabolic Edict. Uh, they do have six cards in hand, so I imagine the amount of removal is pretty high. We're going to just grab Wisp. Do they burn another removal spell in this deal? Yep. I think they're going to push this before I untap to be able to Wisp it. Oh, yeah. They did have the Edict, interestingly enough, but they fired it off on this Recruiter. Definitely a chance that Mirror Crusader was the right call there. Now we get to play Mom. Could just sort it up now, but they've already burned through two bolts. They could have Snap Bolt, actually. But I have this Flick Wrist to protect it, so don't really care about suiting it up right now. Blue sources again. Put on floating mana. Oh, they're actually casting a spell this time. All right. Which makes sense. They're never going to be able to cast brainstorm after this anyway. Or not in the near future, at least. If I'm just pouring all our blue sources and stuff. Man, 
hitting more land drops. I just suit up this mom and start beating in with it. What's happening here? Germog? It's gotta be Germog, right? Pay one mana and like waiting to pay costs. They're exiling cards from their graveyard. We can Wisp it, equip Sword to Wisp and beat down. Don't even need to Wisp it, I actually might just Wisp their land. Never mind, they're just casting a spell. I'm gonna put in Wisp and put Sword on it. I also put in Brightling while they're tapped out, actually, but... Brightling still doesn't attack into this Gurmog very usefully. It would be really nice to have a Crusader right here, that's for sure. We are drawing a lot of Rashadden ports. We cannot port them off of all their blue anymore. Might as well port them off of all their black, I guess. Cast a spell here. K command. Shatter my sword. Make me discard a card. Um. Am I discarding Stoneforge? No, I have two more equipment again. I think I'm just discarding this ballista. Good showing on uh, Walking Ballista. Been discarded twice so far this match. Please cast a spell. I want to put in this Brightling. Ah, oh, that's rude. That attack seems incredibly ambitious, and also does literally nothing. They played their land for turn. I just can block here completely free. They're almost dead here. They might... Mm, I can't quite kill them. So I have seven mana. The only thing I have is GT, so I can't actually. Well, I do have enough mana to go like, grab a sword. Like War and Peace would actually be lethal here, but or at least I think it would. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Now I can grab GT and equip it, but that doesn't like make this any more or less lethal. I'm gonna make this a 5 1. I don't think we're going to give it life link or anything. I'm gonna leave up like 2 white, I think. And maybe porting them isn't relevant at 5 lands anymore. But I also might want to cast Stoneforge, probably. Hmm. Not actually sure. Uh, 
definitely pumping this. My main issue is that they have an answer to this Flicker Wisp, and then can just brick wall Brightling with Kermod. So I think I want to play Stoneforge, just to ensure that I have some sort of something close to lethal. Get like Banner Skull going. Maybe it was worth it to attack with Mon and just put them to one, so Stoneforge would be lethal. Opponent. Yeah, I think we're just going to stone forge for batter skull here. Is it two life? Oh, it says dot in chat again. I don't know what they're doing this time. Feel pretty good about our board state, though. Assume the first thing they do is crack EE, right? I don't know what my opponent's thinking about. Can I cast something? Strix. Interesting. right now. So they can't attack. But we can't lethal them yet, right? We can put in Batter Skull and equip it, but whatever happens there... I can actually just force them to trump lock with his Gurmog, right? If I put in Batter Skull and equip it to Brightling, leaving up one white... Then I attack with both creatures. They're both lethal threats. They have to chump block Gurmog with Brightling, or Brightling with Gurmog, and then trade Wisp for Flicker Wisp. That's probably my best bet at getting this Gurmog off the table. Yep, I have to block like that. I do have four cards in hand. Three. What are they paying costs for here? Ponder? Snap. 
snap k command keeps them alive. Ooh, snap k command, like, buyback. No, they have to kill the Stoneforge and the Brightling, I think. Or, and the Batter Skull, I think. They also wouldn't have enough land, uh, cards to, like, recast the Gurmog, I don't think. They have to shock the stone forge, shatter the batter skull, chump block, bright language snapcaster. And then we get to like wasteland double port them and stuff. Man, is this match two? This is taking for I playing as Grix's control takes forever. Already ten thirty. K command, yep, that is their K command. Oh, did they just have another Gurmog at hand? Oh, that's so bad for me. Oh, that's also not good for me. Take them off of all their black sources, I suppose. Double port leave of triple white. I think I'm better off leaving this in hand for a possible K command. Now we just kind of sit here, though, is the thing. I guess I could, like, triple port them instead. Four, five, six. That's probably more worth it than holding the landed hand for a K command. I could also just quad port them. Oh no, that taps me out completely. Okay, never mind. Them have two mana. I don't feel that safe. Would love to draw something. Ooh, that's certainly something. There's not even a block it. Deal. I respect that opponent. <laughs> All right. We got there in like a million year long match. Thank you, Grixis Control. Hopefully my last three matches go by a little bit faster. We won game... No, we did not win game one. Game one, we won before. Got a 
horribly crushed. All right, so Ballista, real strong in that match. Got discarded in game two, and then also discarded in game three. I think we... Did we draw it against Miracles and just never cast it? I forget. I think we might have drawn it in game two, and I just never cast it. That or it was just still in my deck. No, I, I think I, like, thought about uh, tutoring for it and just ended up not. If If I could guarantee Wasteland's good against my opponent. I might keep this. This hand's borderline. The Stoneforge makes the batter scroll a little bit better, and my opponent Mulligan to six. And we're on the draw. I like keeping double wasteland and opponent Mulligan to six. I think we're gonna keep this. Hand's a little bit loose for sure, but well to five. Alright. What are we up against? Hey, if they play a non-basic, I might just fire off wasteland. But does not look like it. What are we playing against? Scalding Tron? Island. Miracles? Miracles or Sneak, I think are the two best guesses right now. Could be like Storm or something, but... With just like the natural basic island, I'm inclined to think that they have a, a decent number of them in their deck. Either way, I think we're just going to Stone Forge here, grabbing Sword of Fire and Ice. I already have the Batter Skull, so standstill. I mean, could could yes, could be standstill. I'm just trying to think of like decks that I will. The most likely options for it: Counterspell. Big Counterspell here, there. Yes, they're probably miracles now. Could still be land still, I suppose, but I think the the biggest culprit of a deck that plays Scalding Turn, two basic islands, and a counter spell is gonna not be miracles. Never mind. That's a bloodstain mire. Grixis control with two basic islands. I don't want to play these wastelands because then my opponent's gonna like fetch a basic swamp. I want them to fetch non-basics so I can wasteland them. Also, don't know what to put this revoker on. So I think we're just gonna pass and port. Yeah, my my waste my keeping double wasteland play did not uh did not pan out against my opponent's double basic island deck. My guess is Grixis with Counterspell instead of, um, instead of like Hymns, they're like blue heavier for Counterspells instead of Hymns with Turok. Let's find out. All right. Can just be, what the heck? You just like, I guess it could still be Grixis stuff, but. I think I'm gonna like snap off Wasteland here and play Sarah Avenger. I guess I could have just ported instead. But Esper Stoneblade. Esper Stoneblade with a blood stain mire doesn't strike me as plausible. The blood stain mire makes me think that they're that they had to be like Grixis or something, right? Because if they were two color decks, they'd just be playing like more blue fetches. But the fact that they like have Blood Sandmire in their deck, they're just Grixis control that's blue heavy. Yeah, the the Blood Sandmire is what's really throwing this all for a loop. Yeah, just blue heavy Grixis with a true name. This is not looking great for me. Just in time, Thalia. Thalia plus Krakus fog the Gurmog until we get to like Batter Skull Mana. I 
think I'm kind of priced into trying to fog this Gurmog Angler. Get that good first strike damage on there. In case they want a Toxic Deluge for three for some insane reason. Kills in response, sure. That's what I figured. Does save me five damage. Let me cast Batter's Claw next turn, though. Please, no spell pierce. All right, we're still alive for now. From what I've seen so far, it still just could be like blue black stuff. It's like blue black mid range. I don't know. I got nothing. <laughs> Hopefully, the spawner doesn't find them anything good. They did shuffle. Relevant. And then they're brainstorming. These are good signs. Team blue black, yeah. Could be some weird blue black control list from what we've seen. Nope, there Grixis. Strix, that's obnoxious. Which round is this just got back from LGS's 30th legacy? This is round three. Our round two took so long. <laughs> we played against Grixis control. And now we're just like against Grixis control again. I really want to somehow trade this germ for this Gurmog. And I can just like flick risk the germ. Or flick risk the batter skull. We're almost assuredly killing this Valk. We could just attack with both, gain four life, trade Strix for Avenger, and then Wisp the Batter Skull after. Alright, whatever I'm doing, I'm definitely wastelanding this. <laughs> the end game is putting Batter Skull on a flyer to hopefully punch best, like fly over true name and like so I need to get rid of this Strix which means I'm pretty sure I'm attacking with this Sarah Avenger. I think I'm attacking with both just to gain four life and then I'm gonna flicker with the batter skull. It's gonna be really bad if the last two guards are forced blue card but them's the breaks. Wow, they just take it. Deal. <laughs> Bathe them into, like, overthinking. What could this possibly be? This attack seems horrible. Um. I guess now we just play Revoker on, like, Jace the Mind Sculptor? Their deck doesn't really seem like they're... Attack with none. Oh man. Brick walled. I 
Guess we want to get this Flicker Wisp into play. Let's attack with this germ. See if they, like, double block. Why didn't they block? I think they were just, like, trying to play around something that I had. I don't know what the, I could have had to, like, blow them out there, but... <laughs> worked out great for me. So we can attack again. If they double block this time... Yeah, if they single block, I don't really care. I don't get any life, but they don't, also don't kill my batter skull. Holy, main deck Holy Light. Could be like main deck Walking Ballista or something. Ping off the Angler. The gut Shot. I don't know. Um, I want this Wisp in play because I want to kill them. Yeah, this, this is also game one. The opponent says BRB. Alright. I don't think I played my land for turn yet. Oh no, I just I did. I played Rashad before. Which means I'm just gonna part them once here. Keep pointing that swamp. Hopefully this flicker whisk can can go the distance. <sighs> Might end up putting Batter Skull on it next turn. Hit number seven, gain a bunch of life. Put it at a range of bolts. And K commands. Well, I guess kick him in, they just shock it and sh and shatter the skull. So if I want to play around, but I also want to kill them in like two turns instead of three. Turn turn off their fetch lands too, so they can't find red mana. That sort of thing. Why don't my opponents keep leaving? Game one, opponent disconnected a bunch. Game two, opponent disconnected. Or match two. Match three, opponent just... Alright, they're back. Oh, counterspell, that's rude. I'm so sorry about that. Sorry about that counterspell. Jeez, what a jerk. Well, now, seems we've reached an impasse. Unfortunately, my opponent has a bunch of cards in hand, and are, is a cantrip deck, so... Impasses are much more passable by the opponent than by me. But they also need to find lands. Which I think their main... their main crux here. Hopefully they get Brainstorm locked. I'm never that lucky, though. Ooh. Maybe sometimes that lucky. Never mind. Literally never that lucky. They find the fetch land, they can get red mana. But then we wasteland it, because we can hold this wasteland. Although I think I just played out this turn. Because if they want to, like, shuffle away cards, I can just wasteland it before they untap. Let's find Sword of Fire, nice. It's a black. So they like snap push the germ. Then attack with Germog. <sighs> no, I'm not gonna do that yet. Because they still brainstorm. They they want to fetch. Push the Revoker, oh jeez. Come on, top deck, Sword of Fire and Ice. You just fetch basic swamp, which is kind of why I didn't want to play the wasteland, but I also wanted to be able to cut them off with possible red mana. Hmm. 
At some point, I'm supposed to be like attacking with German and picking up and replaying the spatter skull, but I don't think that points yet. Maybe I actually want to port these blue sources now. I guess I am terrified of Fatal Push, but... I'm also terrified of, like, Ponders and stuff. If they have Fatal Push in their hand, they can already fire it off. Porting Swamps will only play around top deck Fatal Push for a turn. Yeah, that thing's gonna keep murdering my face. Come on, Stoneforge. Sort of Fire and Ice something. One, two, three, four, nine mana. I still can't port them, but we're getting close to death. Deck with true name, deck with both. Deal. Snap off that block. And I just gain one life instead. Because they could have like a force plus blue card. Oh, we immediately draw a wisp. If we can set up Wispel's Barrow Skull, it is lethal. Yeah, Forceful's blue card. And now they have lethal in play. That's why I assume they attacked there, is because they had a plan for the batter soul after I picked it back up. Now they can just alpha and I have to trade Flicker Wisp with Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, we're just we're actually just dead. Jeez, we did draw a lot of lands, that was unfortunate. Almost had that game at several points. My opponent did mold a five though, and we still we still died, but turn three true name is a rough card to beat for sure. Does also make these brightlings worse. Also makes my crusaders worse. Is this the only sideboard I died last time? I think so. We cut like revokers and plows that still feels right here. My opponent still has Strix in their deck. And I imagine they have Planeswalkers somewhere, so. Run it back like that. Sand's pretty decent. The opponent does have double island, double swamp. So these wastelands aren't as good as they are against some different vari variations of Grixis. But. They still can be good, and this hand just has a bunch of other cards that I also like. Dolly and Mom. I think I'm just going to snap off a Wasteland on this. Needle my Vial? Maybe not. Maybe we'll snap off a Dahlia. Actually, we're going to Wasteland plus Mom.
uh, push or bolt this mom, I imagine. Push. Ponder. Deal. Slam this Thalia. No force. Don't do it. Nice. Alright, looking decent. Hope the hopefully the plan is like manned now that I'm out of this game. Fetch like basic island here. Strikes, sure. We can plow that if we need to, and the stall age attacks through it. Not a huge deal. Hello, cat. The second thought is not great. The plan is hopefully just manage an album and they stop hitting land drops at some point. Yes, like this point, perfect. Also, love to not draw more Thalia. <laughs> Actual worst bricks in my deck right now. Especially when we just have a mom in place, so that my opponent is already hard pressed to kill his first one. So my opponent just keeps bricking. Oh. Well, it's second basic island, so they can't cast much off that besides cantrips. Wow! <laughs> that seems astronomically unlikely. Oh, please, Brick. Please brainstorm lock yourself. I don't think they should fire that off until their own turn. Maybe I'm wrong in that analysis, but... So they already hit their land drop last turn. They can just wait until their turn, cast it. Hopefully it'll land drop. Hopefully find a fetch land. Diabolic eats me, I dare you. Please, I will sack Thalia all day. <laughs> My deck really does not want me to win this game. Uh, we'll play second vial. I, I guess it's already it's also turned off by this pithy needle. But at some point, if I draw like a flicker wisp, flicker the needle plus the vial and some stuff or whatever. Yeah, goodbye, Thalia. I literally could not need you any less. <laughs> oh, pony hitting. Wait, did they brainstorm and then. Oh, uh, if they like found multiple lands, I guess they didn't need to fetch. We're on a really light red splash with their deck. Wouldn't be surprised if they're just not on any bolts. Counterspell, please. Just counter it, kill it, do something. Yes, thank you. Just let me play all my Thalias. <laughs> Maybe my fourth all a hand is panning out. My opponent got Edict, Counterspell. 
Eh, yeah, sure, whatever. I don't need these cards. Keep beating him down. Two life at a time. Start to run the risk of, like, Snap Edict. Then we sack the Monk, so we have Crockett's Brickthalia at least. I wonder if they're thinking about blocking here. It's like K Command back there strikes. Oh yeah. That's what it looks like. They're gonna fatal push the mom into like fetch K command the mom, kill mom by back strix. I don't know, they're just gonna double push it. Alright, sure. You did your you did your duty, mom. Oh, that's a rude one. Mirror Fair, Brightling would be nice. Yep, we're just gonna draw lands though, because my deck decided it really did not want to win this game with our our draws of literally nothing but Thalia's Aether Vials and Lands. Deck really trying its hardest to lose this game. So could be in it with a, a Mirren Crusader. It's like you haven't drawn it. Yeah, this is like this is some uh pretty egregiously bad luck. It's like we haven't even drawn a useful I guess we drew the Caracas as a useful land, but we kept the both of our both of the wastelands were in our opener. We just drew a bunch of planes, a second vial, and literally three Thalias in a row, which was very surprising. Alright. That's not the worst card in the world. Please don't counter this. I said please. I don't know what card they would be needing to fetch to four mana to like counter this though. He did kill this Liliana. Oh, for snap counter spell, yes, of course. And there's an argument to like casting Thalia first. Prevent exactly that. I'm done. I'm off. I'm off this game. <laughs> Deck really did not want to win that. Maybe your opponent will vote wrong. Your opponent's just not going to let it resolve now. Where's Grixis control? There we go. He died there again. I don't think anything was really saving us that time, though. Deck just really decided to not leverage like the the four to five turns I had there where it's just like hey just draw Thalias don't worry about it and then my opponent drew lands into a bunch of spells when when they were locked 
It happens. Component, no. Are we in? Are we not in? Uh, nope. Increased matchmaking priority. Maybe we'll play, like, not super slow deck space last year rounds and make me stay up till, like, 1 in the morning. That would be nice. Played against Miracles, into Grixis, into Grixis. There we go. Opponent, don't do this to me. No. Where are all the opponents? There we go. Um, we will take the play. Sounds keepable, not great. Especially if the opponent is on lands, like MTG butt. I do recall playing against this person before, but don't remember what they're on at all, but we'll keep it. Same could be decent against lands as well. If we can tutor out like a fast sort of fire nice. We have port for like a maze of it or something. It is bad if they're on a combo deck, but I'd keep this in the blind. And I don't like analyzing hands based on like information MTG bot gives me. Drum roll, let's see if MTG bot's right. Could be. Yep, MTG bot is right. Alright, well, at least we have a pitch of dark depths. At least we have mom online to protect, hope to help protect against punishing fires while we try to set up a sword. I assume we put a gamble for life from alone, though. Which means we're really under the gun to kill them. Next turn we can put in sword plus second mom. Blown back the depths. Tabernacle, that's rude. Um, I'm gonna play land here. Yeah, I have to pay for both these right now. Can I just say always yield to this? I'm just not going to play more creatures now. We just want to get up to four lands so I can like put in sword plus still pay for these guys. There's also a chance I'm supposed to just put in sword next turn and only pay for the mom. I was really hoping they were not going to have tabernacle that quickly. Or thespian stage that quickly. <laughs> I can't activate it yet. Crusader is a plan. It's not a good plan, but it's a plan. Only 
have one plow to deal with a merit lage. We can't like port them off of the combo. Really want to draw like Caracas. Didn't even dredge loam. Wisp. I can't even. I can't actually even equip. I should have paid one with this port. But I'm not gonna like, play mom. Hmm. I don't know what my plan is. Let the stone fork die. Because if I plow, then they can just dredge back loam and then replay the entire combo next turn. Might just be worth conceding. Because I could have just equipped their eggs right? had two free mana. No, I need the mana for the plow. I do think we're just dead. That tabernacle was a real bummer. And then them immediately getting to the combo. They didn't pay the one. I assume they're just going to depth stage again, pass the turn. Let the stone forge die this time. the opponent. There we go. Goodbye, Stoneforge. Oh, is this guy uh, like a, a person person? <laughs> Immediately stack Stoneforge, find like find an equipment to put in. Classic. Yeah, we're kind of getting face rolled game one. Opponent had like a, a very fast start, which is usually how you lose these these game ones, or most of the games against lands. Ooh. Just mill the punishing fire, probably, or have it in hand already. Neither yet. Or, I guess, they didn't mill it yet. They could easily just have a punishing fire in hand to kill me. Guess I'm not dead. Pro Redmond block. Rock rotation. Sure. Oh, barbering. That'll do it. All right. 
Tier games two and three. Hurried Sword and Removal and Graveyard Hate is what this matchup is definitely all about. Cut that. Shave Thalia's. I never remember if I cut them all. Crusaders suck. Batter Skull sucks. Yeah, I'm supposed to cut all the Thalia's. Since leaving in removal is like actually really important in this matchup ever since everyone started playing tireless trackers and such. Seravenger, that seems fine. Yeah, this matchup is all about maneuvering it so that you can have a Sanctum Prelate with a sword on it. At least game one is. Game two is a little bit trickier to maneuver. I want to like this hand, but it's got, like, Recruiter, but it doesn't have, like, the, the tools to actually win the game, especially if they have a Wasteland. I think we can find a better six, like this one. Significantly better six. Mm. I don't want this. There's a, maybe I'm supposed to, like, shave some number of the... of the moms, instead of cutting some of the stuff I did, like, keep in some number of Thalias. Don't really want to run out rest of peace on two. I want to, I'd rather see, like, a card I want to hit in the graveyard first, so they can't just K-grip it and then start loaming or P-firing or whatever. This is going to grab sort of war and peace. Sure, whatever. What's about to happen? Is it just loan paying two life? Isn't the Asian Tomb usually in the board? Well, sometimes it's in the, it's in the main. Don't know what my opponent's casting now. That's where I'm an Apex Creator. Alright, well, this is why we left in Source of Plowshares. Specifically for this reason. Drawing that was probably terrible because now this is just a Squire. Does anyone know the other streamers of the DNTF right? his user? Uh, Death and Taxes FTW, I think, is the one you're looking for. Phil Gallagher, the guy that runs Brave University. His Twitch moniker is Death and Taxes FTW. I'd really like to see another land there instead of this other sword. This other sword was horrible in so many ways. There we go. Punch. Hopefully they don't have like Tyler's tracker after that. I'm out of removal. We can't we don't have the land, so we can't like play an equip sword to try and shock it down either. My wow, opponent's just going off. Oh, jeez, and they're just gonna like wasteland my port. <laughs> this is not. I'm not having a lucky day. This is not. This is not good. A good time. After that last round, into this round, just like doesn't feel like most of my decisions are mattering. Yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, sure, why not? I have not lost the lands in a long time, but definitely there's no matchup that is unlosable or unwinnable. Just very favored and, like, not very unfavored. Draw one of the other six removal spells still in my or five? 
Yeah, I five one mana removal spells. They would still have like nine thousand clues in play, but so what's the plan? Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I don't think they can kill one shot with this tracker. They have four cards in hand. The odds of the Stone Forge living are pretty low. Plan could be like War and Peace, gain a bunch of life. Oh no, I'm just gonna get Wastelanded again. Eh, we'll rest in peace. Hope the top deck of Swords of Pie shares our path, I guess. Is the best plan. I don't even know what this is. Okay, grip, sure. Maybe they'll draw two extra cards off this the silver mine right here. And then also attack with Hairless Tracker. Ugh. <sighs> Path to Exile keeps me in this game, but not by much. My opponent has like an effective 11 cards in hand. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, now they gain like a million life. Because this isn't Path, but. Make them work for it. They could also just find Punishing Fire and kill me, but. Details. I could also just find Thespian stage to kill me. I could just like not draw more lands and die. Oh, there we go. Well, we tried. The cards were definitely not with us. The first time I've lost against lands in a long, long time. At least it ended fast. We can hopefully finish up here before midnight. Would like to have some more interesting games against lands if they're like a super good lands player. I enjoy the the games of lands that like have have impactful decisions in them. All right, I would like to play first. Jeez, again, this deck is not. I'm not really wanting to win today. <laughs> what is this nonsense? <laughs> Ugh, I'm on the play. I have a castable spell and Rashad in port. Do I have to keep this? Probably. Not elves, which is what I was concerned with at the rate that we were getting crushed. Hey, white source. 
What does basic island mean? Misty in a basic island is just like blue red Dover, right? Which means this rover just doesn't. My rover does nothing against most of the Delver decks. I think I'm just gonna name Grim Lava Mancer here, so this doesn't get dazed. Sure, daze that. That card was completely irrelevant. They might be just dazing it because they think it's one of the only spells I can cast. Because I'm like waiting colorless, colorless here. Flip off another daze. I might just run out this sword to get it dazed. Because I'd rather resolve a recruiter, I think. Ideally, we just draw a two drop or something. White mana for these cards. But yeah, we'll... What if they don't daze this, though? Well, if we're casting any, uh, any other spells, then we're going to draw another white source. Don't we draw another white source? We can just play around the daze, so... I think we just run this out and hope they daze it. So I feel like they will. Because they can't guarantee date, yeah. They can't guarantee days the creature I would play to follow up. It might be like a two drop or a one drop. If next turn I go like mom into a quip or something. Land, please. Alright, we're getting somewhere. Force. Yep. They just sound like mono blue Delver or something. <laughs> it's nothing but blue cards. And this island played like three times. They might hit a second land drop finally. Oh, rip. Oh. Interesting. It's also incredibly bad for me. I can actually play Brightling here, though. Brightling plus Wasteland on this to hopefully burn them from equipping. If they do equip, we're just hosed. Because I can't afford to waste levels port because I don't cast anything. Deck, whatever they're on. Please, no second land. We could also find another land, like recruit a revoker or something. What is this? <laughs> Blue white Delver Blade? So glad they never made a spirit guide. Yeah, I'm so glad they never made any more spirit guides than already exist. This card should be missed. The Fable Chess Guy Delver. Maybe. We've only seen Basic Island Tundra. Can three color Delver decks play like Basic Island in them? Beats the heck out of me. I feel like a recruit revoker and then just die to this, like, 3 2 flyer. Alright, maybe they have Bolt and we're dead. Oh yeah, 
yeah, that one pump. Definitely not suspicious. <laughs> Yeah, sure, just, yep, that's the thing that's in the deck. Yeah, now we're just dead. And some weird stuff today, that's for sure. I assume blue white Delver Blade is their deck. But just also, it's just a Delver deck with the card Counterspell in it. Counterspell and Stifle. Alright, let's go game two, I suppose. So. Walking Bull's so good? Probably not. It's only good against Delver of Secrets. I assume that there, there are true names somewhere in my opponent's deck. I think I want this. I assume there's also, like, Plows or something? 